Okay, so have you heard about this radio station in Poland? I think I saw something about it, yeah. So get this. Okay. They fired their entire human staff and replaced them with AI. Oh, wow. Like, not just a DJ or two, but <laughs> everyone. Uh, AI it's... DJs, AI news, the whole thing. Wow, so it's like a fully AI-run station. Yeah. That's wild. Oh, I know, right? It's like straight out of science fiction, except it's happening right now. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. like we're living in the future. For sure. And the station is off Radio Krakow. Okay. And, like, what's so interesting to me is that they were really struggling. So were they, like, a small station? Yeah. Okay. They were state-funded and had hardly any listeners. So they needed, like, a major shakeup. Exactly. I guess going all in on AI is one way to do it. Right. It definitely got people talking. For sure. Yeah. But it raises so many questions, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. About the future of radio jobs and, like, our relationship with AI. Definitely. And that's exactly why we're diving into this today. Yeah, I'm really curious to hear more about it. So we've got this article from Petapixel, which <laughs> is a photography and tech news site. Oh, okay. And it's from November 5th, 2024. So this is all super fresh. Oh, wow. Hot off the presses. Right. Yeah. So we're not just going to rehash the events, though. We're, we're going to dig into the why. Okay, the why. Like, why did they do this? What does it tell us about the state of AI? And what could it mean for all of us? Yeah, like, what are the bigger implications here? Exactly. So... To understand their motivations, I think we need to picture off Radio Krakow before the AI takeover. Okay. Paint the picture for me. So they were basically a ghost station, like barely a signal on the airwaves. Oh, wow. So they were really struggling. Yeah. So I guess in a way, their radical move makes sense. Right. Like they had nothing to lose. Yeah, but did they think through the consequences? That's a good question. And what about the human cost? You know, the people who lost their jobs. Well, they did introduce these AI-generated Gen Z presenters. Oh, really? Yeah, like Amelia Jacob and Alex. Wow, and are these like real people? Yeah, no, no. So they're completely AI-generated. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and they even have digital backstories and AI-generated headshots. So they're trying to make them seem like real people. Yeah, I guess so. That's kind of creepy. It is a little bit unsettling. Yeah. But get this, listener numbers did skyrocket after the switch. Oh, really? So it worked. Well, sort of, but not necessarily for the reasons they might have hoped. What do you mean? Well, it seems like a lot of the attention was negative. Oh, like people were upset about the AI DJs? Yeah, exactly. Oh. There was a pretty big backlash. That makes sense. People are attached to their radio hosts. Right. It's like a personal connection. Yeah, for sure. And the New York Times actually described it as a barrage of abuse. Wow. So people were really angry. Yeah, they were accusing the station of sacrificing human connection for technology. And that's a valid concern, right? Totally. Like, we're talking about real people's jobs here. Yeah, and the emotional impact of being replaced by a machine. Exactly. And it's not just a handful of angry tweets, either. Like, this was a significant and sustained public outcry. So they really struck a nerve. Yeah, they did. It's interesting, though, because on one hand... You can see this as like a desperate attempt to stay relevant. Yeah, for sure. Like they were grasping at straws. But on the other hand, maybe they were onto something. What do you mean? Well, like, what if AI can actually deliver a compelling radio experience? Mm -hmm. Like, who are we to say it's wrong? That's a good point. But then again, there's something about hearing a real person's voice. You know. Yeah, like sharing that moment with you. Exactly. And that feels irreplaceable. It does, doesn't it? It really does. It's that human element that's at the heart of the debate. Totally. Because yeah. while the technology is fascinating, we have to ask ourselves. Yeah. Are we ready for a world where algorithms curate our entertainment, our information, even our companionship? Whoa. That's a big question. It is. And it's not just about preference either. Right. There are real jobs at stake. Trish. These advancements in AI. Mm. They have the potential to, like, completely reshape the workforce. Yeah. And not necessarily for the better. Exactly. And it's not just radio. Right. We're seeing this trend across creative industries. Like, where else? Music art writing. Wow. AI is becoming so sophisticated. Yeah. It can mimic human creativity in ways we never thought possible. It's both amazing and terrifying at the same time. It really is. In this case in Poland, it really brings that into sharp focus. Yeah. Like, they took things further than we've seen before. Right. And the public reaction was fierce. Yeah, for sure. But it also sparked a global conversation That's about the role of AI in our lives. That's a conversation we need to be having. Definitely. And I think it's just getting started. 
Yeah, I think you're right about that. So to understand the consequences a little better, okay. let's take a closer look at what actually happened at Off Radio Krakow. Yeah, what went down? Because things took an even stranger turn. Oh no, what do they do now? Well, they decided to air an AI-generated interview okay. with Wisława Simborska. And who was that? She's like a Polish cultural icon, a poet. Okay. But she passed away in 2012. Oh, wow. So they interviewed a dead person. Pretty much. Using AI. Yeah. That's kind of messed up. It is a little bit unsettling. Yeah, it feels disrespectful somehow. Right. Like, using AI to generate content is one thing. Yeah. But using it to, like, simulate a conversation with a deceased person. Yeah. That crosses a line for a lot of people. Totally. It raises all sorts of ethical questions. Like, what kind of questions? Well, like, about authenticity, respect for the deceased... And the potential for manipulation. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's a slippery slope. It really is. And it wasn't just the public who found it unsettling. Really? Yeah, so one of the human hosts who was let go, Okay. his name is Lucas Zaleski. Okay. And he actually attended Simborska's funeral. Wow, so this was like a real person he knew. Yeah, and he said that the AI interview was technically impressive, but he couldn't shake the feeling that it was something totally fake. Wow. Yeah, that's got to be tough to see. Yeah, it's like your profession, your passion being replaced by something that feels so artificial. Exactly. And that's the crux of it, isn't it? What do you mean? Like, no matter how sophisticated AI becomes, yeah, can it ever truly replicate the nuances of human experience? Mm-hmm. The emotional depth, the spark of genuine connection. That's a deep question. It is. Yeah. Or are we heading towards a future where the line between real and artificial becomes increasingly blurred? Like a world where we can't tell the difference anymore. Exactly. And that makes you question the very nature of our own humanity. Oh, okay. That got deep fast. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. No, no, it's good. It's good. It's important to think about these things. I agree with you completely. Because this situation with Off Radio Krakow, whether they intended to or not, Right. They forced us to confront some pretty profound questions. They really did. And we can't shy away from those questions. Definitely. Because AI is here to stay. It is. And it's only going to get more powerful. So we need to figure this out. We do. We need to be having these conversations now before it's too late. Absolutely well said. Thanks. Now, before we get too lost in the existential dread, let's take a step back and look at the tools that made all of this possible. Okay, the tech behind it all. Yeah, because believe it or not, The technology behind Off Radio Krakow's AI experiment isn't some top-secret government project. Really? No, it's actually readily available to anyone with an internet connection. Oh, wow. So anyone could do this. Pretty much. That's kind of mind-blowing. It is. So what tools are we talking about here? Well, they use a combination of publicly available tools. Okay. So first, there's ChatGPT. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, it's a large language model developed by OpenAI. Okay. And it's capable of generating incredibly realistic and coherent text. So that's how they created the scripts for the AI DJs. Exactly. Wow, that's impressive. It is right. And then there's Eleven Labs. Okay. Which is a platform for creating synthetic voices. So that's how they made the AI DJs sound human. Exactly. Wow, that's crazy. I know, it's pretty wild. And they have like a library of voices to choose from. Yeah, and you can even create your own custom voice. Oh, wow, so I could have my own AI voice double. Yeah, pretty much. That's both amazing and slightly terrifying. It is, right. Yeah. And then finally, there's Leonardo.ai. Okay, what does that do? It's a tool for generating AI images. So that's how they create the headshots. Yep. Wow. So they really went all out with the AI. They did. It's like a whole AI production studio. Right. Yeah. And it's just one example of how AI is changing the world of visual art and design. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. So essentially, these three tools, ChatGPT, Eleven Labs, and Leonardo, AI. Okay. They represent like the cutting edge of AI development. In their respective fields. Yeah. It's incredible how accessible these tools have become. Right. And that's what's so fascinating about this whole situation. What do you mean? Well... If a small radio station in Poland can pull this off, yeah, what's stopping anyone else? Mm, that's a good question. Right. Yeah. And that's where the ethical debate gets really heated uh, because this goes beyond just radio. Right. The same technology could be used to create AI-generated news anchors, podcast hosts, even virtual companions. Wow. So it's not just about entertainment anymore. No, it's not. It's about like... The fabric of our society. Yeah, exactly. And that's where the ethical concerns come in. Like what kind of concerns? Well, things like job displacement. 
the spread of misinformation and the erosion of trust in media and information sources. Right, because if anyone can create this kind of content, yeah. how do we know what's real and what's not? Exactly. And that's what we saw play out in real time with Off Radio Krakow. Oh. They faced intense criticism, yeah. not just for replacing their human staff, right. but also for the potential misuse of this technology. So it's not just about the technology itself. No. It's about how it's used. Exactly. And even a Polish parliamentarian who considers himself pro-AI. Okay. He publicly stated that what they did crossed an ethical line. Wow. So even within the government, there's a recognition that there need to be boundaries. Yeah. It seems like everyone's kind of grappling with this right now. It's a lot to process. It really is. So it seems like even those who are optimistic about the potential of AI. Yeah. They recognize that there need to be boundaries. They do. We need to figure out how to harness the power of this technology yeah. while mitigating the risks. Definitely. It's a balancing act for sure. It is a tough one. And it's a conversation that needs to involve everyone. Like who? Technologists, policymakers, ethicists, and most importantly, everyday people like you. Right. Because the future of AI isn't something that's going to be decided in some Silicon Valley boardroom. Exactly. Something we're all going to have to grapple with together. Absolutely well said. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up the parliamentarian. Yeah. Because it seems like even in the government, there's a recognition that AI is here to stay. Absolutely. Like, it's not a question of if it's going to change the world. Right. But how? Yeah, exactly. And that's where the real discussion needs to happen. For sure. And that discussion needs to go beyond those, like, fear-mongering headlines about robots taking over the world. Right. Like, it's not about killer robots. No, exactly. It needs to be nuanced and informed. Yeah. And focused on finding solutions that benefit humanity. Absolutely. So let's talk solutions then. Okay. Because I think a lot of people listening are probably wondering, like, what can we do about this? Right. Is there any way to prepare for a future where AI plays such a prominent role? Well, there are definitely things we can do. Okay, like what? So first and foremost, we need to educate ourselves about AI. Okay. Its capabilities, its limitations. Yeah. The more we understand about this technology, right. the better equipped we'll be to make informed decisions about its development and deployment. So should we all be rushing out to learn how to code? Well, that wouldn't hurt. Okay. But it's not just about technical skills. Okay. It's also about developing critical thinking skills, mm. adaptability, and a willingness to embrace lifelong learning. Because the jobs of tomorrow may not even exist today. Ex uh, like, we yeah. can't even imagine what the future holds. Yeah. So instead of trying to predict the future, right. we should be focusing on building the skills that will allow us to thrive in any future. Absolutely. And those skills include things like creativity, problem solving, communication, and collaboration. Yeah. These are the skills that AI, at least for now, can't easily replicate. Okay. So education and adaptability are key. Yeah. What else can we do to ensure that AI is used for good rather than for ill? Well, we need to have clear ethical guidelines in place for the development and use of AI. Okay. And those guidelines need to be developed through a collaborative process. Involving? Involving experts from various fields. Right, who? Cool. Including technology, ethics, law, social sciences. So it's not just about the tech itself. No. It's about the human values that guide its development? Exactly. Because AI is a tool. Right. And like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. Yeah. It's up to us to decide how we want to use it. Well said. Now, you mentioned earlier that Off Radio Krakow eventually backtracked on their AI experiment. Right. Due to the backlash. Yeah, they, they kind of had to. But their editor-in-chief still insisted that they were pioneers. It's a bold statement. It is. And while their execution might have been flawed, yeah. they did spark a global conversation about the role of AI in society. True. So in that sense, maybe they were pioneers. Okay. Albeit unintentionally. Yeah. They showed us what's possible, but also what can go wrong when we rush into these things without fully considering the consequences. So even though their experiment failed, it wasn't a complete waste? No, I don't think so. Okay. It served as a valuable case study. Okay. A cautionary tale. Yeah. That highlighted the importance of ethical considerations in the development and deployment of AI. It also makes you wonder what's next. Right. If AI DJs are already a reality, what other professions could be next on the chopping block? That's a question a lot of people are asking. Yeah. And while it's impossible to predict the future with certainty, right. it's safe to say that AI will continue to disrupt various industries. Like what kind of industries? Well, it could be anything from transportation to healthcare to finance. Wow. But disruption doesn't always have to be negative. Okay. 
it can also create opportunities for innovation and growth. So instead of fearing AI, yeah. we should be looking for ways to work alongside it. Exactly. To harness its power for good. Absolutely. And that means being proactive, embracing change, and constantly learning and adapting. Because? Because the future belongs to those who are willing to embrace the unknown. Well, that's certainly a call to action. It is a call to action. But before we wrap up, I want to circle back to something you said earlier. Yeah. About the importance of the human element. Right. Because even if AI can generate content mimic voices, even create art. There's still something about the human touch that feels irreplaceable. Absolutely, and I think that's something we need to remember as we navigate this new world of AI. Yeah. Technology can enhance our lives in many ways. For sure. But it shouldn't come at the expense of human connection, creativity, and empathy. Which brings us back to radio. Okay. Because even though off-radio Krakow's AI experiment might have been a bit of a flop, yeah. I still believe there's something magical about the medium. What do you mean? About hearing a real person's voice, sharing stories, playing music, connecting with an audience in real time. Yeah, there's something special about that. There is. There's an intimacy, a sense of shared experience right. that AI, at least for now, can't replicate. Yeah, and I hope that even as technology advances, right. we don't lose sight of the value of human connection. I agree with you there. Now let's switch gears for a moment okay. and talk about the technical side of things. Right. Because you mentioned earlier that the tools Off Radio Krakow used are readily available. Could you walk us through those tools in a bit more detail? Sure. So they used a combination of three main tools. Okay. First, there's ChatGPT. Oh, yeah, we talked about that before. Right, which is a large language model developed by OpenAI. Okay. And it's capable of generating incredibly realistic and coherent text. So ChatGPT is basically the brains behind the operation? Yeah, you could say that. Okay. It provides the content. Yeah, it is. And then there's Eleven Labs, okay. which is a platform for creating synthetic voices. Right. They have vast library of voices to choose from. Yeah. Or you can even create your own custom voice. So you're telling me I could have my own AI voice double? Yeah, pretty much. That's both amazing and slightly terrifying. It is kind of wild. It is. And finally, there's Leonardo.ai, okay. which is a tool for generating AI images. Right. This is what was used to create those AI-generated headshots for the DJs. It's just one example of how AI is changing the world of visual art and design. It's pretty amazing. So essentially, these three tools, ChatGPT, Eleven Labs, and Leonardo AI, they represent the cutting edge of AI development in their respective fields. They do. And what's remarkable is that they're all publicly available. Right. Meaning anyone can access them and experiment with them. That's right. And that's both exciting and a little bit daunting. Yeah, for sure. Because it means the power of AI is no longer limited to large corporations or research institutions. Right. It's in the hands of anyone with an internet connection. Which brings us back to the ethical considerations we discussed earlier. Absolutely. Because with great power comes great responsibility. Very true. And that's why it's so important to have these conversations. Yeah. To raise awareness about the potential benefits and risks of AI. Right. And to work together to ensure that this technology is used in a way that benefits all of humanity. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. But before we wrap up, I want to bring the conversation back to you, the listener. Okay. Because this isn't just an abstract discussion about technology. Great. It's about the future we're creating together. Yeah. So as we wrap up this whole AI radio takeover thing, yeah. what are some key takeaways you hope our listeners are walking away with? Well, I think it's crucial to recognize that AI isn't some futuristic fantasy anymore. Right. It's here. Yeah. It's evolving rapidly and it's already having a huge impact on our lives. For sure. And as we've talked about, that impact isn't always positive. Right. Like, we've seen how AI can disrupt industries, displace workers, and even like raise those ethical questions exactly. about authenticity and manipulation. It's important to remember that AI is a tool. Okay. And like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. Right. It's up to us as a society to decide how we want to use it. And that's where the listener comes in, right? Absolutely. Because this isn't just for like tech experts or policymakers. That's not. It's something we all need to be thinking about. For sure. And engaging with. Exactly. Because the future of AI isn't something that's going to be decided in a vacuum. Right. It's something we're all going to be a part of, whether we like it or not. So the more informed and engaged we are. Yeah the better equipped we'll be to handle all this. Exactly. So what can our listeners do to stay ahead of the curve? Well, there are some great resources online. Like what? 
like websites from organizations like OpenAI and the Future of Life Institute. Okay. They offer articles, reports, even online courses. On AI. Yeah, on different aspects of AI. And what about staying up to date on all the latest developments? Well, it's true. AI is constantly changing. Yeah. But there are newsletters and podcasts that curate all the important news and insights. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, just search online and you'll find a bunch. I think it's also important to, like, have conversations like this one. Yeah, for sure. Like, talk to friends family colleagues about AI? Yeah, the more we talk about it, the more we normalize it. Right. And the better prepared we'll be for whatever comes next. Definitely well said. Now, before we wrap up completely, I want to leave our listeners with something to think about. Right. We've talked about the potential downsides of AI. We have. But what about the good stuff? Oh, yeah, for sure. What are some ways AI could actually improve our lives in the future? Well, the possibilities are endless, really. Like how AI could revolutionize healthcare, education, transportation, even our understanding of the universe. Wow. It could help us solve some of the world's most pressing problems. Like what kind of problems? Climate change, poverty, disease. So it's not all doom and gloom? Not at all. AI is a powerful tool, and it's up to us to decide how to use it. Right. If we approach it wisely and ethically, we can create a better future for everyone. And that's a message of hope I think we can all get behind. That is. So to our listeners, as you go about your day, yeah, keep an open mind about AI. Right. Explore those resources, engage in those conversations, and most importantly, don't be afraid to ask questions. Definitely good advice. Because the future of AI is in our hands. It really is. And together we can shape it for the better. I agree. Well, that's a great place to end it. Yeah, it is. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of AI. Thanks for having me. We'll see you next time.